is your man, guys. Check it out. I'll tell you what, super important. You go on YouTube and you follow. Hey, it's Jim from my garage. Check it out. Hit the subscribe button and notifications. And I guarantee you're going to be a happier camper on our YouTube than anybody else's. But you're here right now on Instagram. So this is the deal. You know what? Do you have a 1999 to 2006 Harley Davidson? And you know what? You don't know nothing about your cam plate, more specifically your cam tensioners. Well, this is what it is right here, ladies and gentlemen. In the front, oh, the cam just fell out. That's probably not a good thing when you're going down the road. This is a cam chain tensioner. Your pinion shaft comes through here, operates the pump, and then it runs the, off the gear, you know, that turns the cam up here, that ultimately, turn, ultimate, ultimately hit two for English, ultimately turns the gear in the back here, and there's another tensioner uh, here in the back. And as you can see, that one's totally worn out and broken. Now, this was removed from a motorcycle. It says here with uh, 28,000 miles on it. The front tensioner, as you can see, it's totally worn down. And the pin that was in there actually goes there. It broke off. Needless to say, it got sucked up into the pump, which I'll show you in a minute and it lost oil pressure and a catastrophic oofta happened, okay? Now, the thing of it is, is this, that it's a common problem between 20 and 25,000 miles. Frankly, they need to be inspected. Inspections can happen here at my garage at no charge. Make an appointment. We will inspect them to see if they need to be replaced. Now, typically at 99.9% .9 of the time when we replace them, we upgrade the tensioners to the new hydraulic tensioner, which came out in 2006 in the Dyna, but on the bagger didn't come out in 2007, and they're hydraulically operated. Now, why do I say that? Well, they don't need to be inspected until 50, 60,000 miles after installation. So here we have here our most popular fueling cam plate and pump, okay? The HP Plus, this happens to be a display. You can notice in the biggest difference, the pump here, this is all cast aluminum. There's a wave washer inside of there. I could, I could show you later. Oh, I hope somebody gets the phone because I ain't getting it. And the bottom line is, is the wave washer helps stabilize the gears. And uh, we'll talk about, you know, I'll go grab one. We'll talk about that later, of uh, why their pump is better. But these are hand assembled. Everything's micrometrically checked for proper fitment and they have a bunch of different sizes. These guys are all about being anal with their product and that's the best product to get, right? So the thing of it is our house product is fueling. Most of the time you come in with this problem, that's what you're gonna get. We're gonna replace all the parts that you're gonna have failures with so that way you should have something that's gonna last you many, 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 many miles into the future. The thing of it is this, this right here is the culprit. These things break left and right like you're getting them for free. So you know what? Hey, do me a favor. Can you go get me a factory pump off of the shelf over there? That's um, hopefully complete so I can show these guys what we're talking about. But the thing of it is, is that, you know what? This is the ticket. You need to upgrade that. Now, that depending upon the year, early model years, I think up to 2005, it's gonna give you 60% greater volume of fluid, oil specifically, which is gonna give you greater lubricity and more specifically, better oil pressure. Now we notice on the touring bikes that actually have, that to me looks like a Milwaukee 8 one. I'm to try, to find try to find me one so I can look at the gears. But the thing of it is, is the Milwaukee 8 even has another problem, which we'll get to in a second. But the bottom line is, is that on the early models years, you can get 60%. And then on, I think it's after 05, they changed the pump design and uh, it turns into, you know, 25% greater volume and things of that nature. So Harley even knew there was a problem. They did make it better. Um, the thing of it is, even on the Milwaukee 8, oh, who remembers the 17 and 18 models? These things were grenading like tick. I mean, they're like they're getting them for free. Boom, 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 boom. And it's like 2,500 miles grenaded. Now, there are a lot of people out there I saw on the forums are like, I got 30,000 miles on my bike and it hasn't grenaded yet. Well, you might be one of the lucky ones. It took until 2019. They went through multiple pump designs and changes. There's a lot of fluid dynamic issues as the oil gets picked up and being pumped through here, going from big to small, small to big, it's ridiculous. 
Bottom line is what they did, if you look in the back of this pump right here, they machined a little groove, okay? And they added an O-ring essentially, a little foam fat O-ring that goes inside there, goes up up at the engine case, help get with the scavenging. Now, the thing of it is, is that the run out on the flywheel on the pinion side, preferably needs to be under three thousandths. They who do have a little bit of a wiggle room in there, and that's one of the reasons why hardly most of the time you get the cranks are under three thousandths. It's pretty good. <coughs> oh, my coughing. Is that marijuana causing that or Omicron or the Delta variant? I have no idea. Or is it just a cold? Actually, no, it's for me talking so damn much. Thinking you'll need a little sip to drink. So the thing of it is, is that it runs through the pump. That's what drives the pump. Comes out the other side. There's a gear here. Runs the other gear on top. And then this is a hydraulic opening. Ooh, look at that. I knew we had one because we just did one. Can you give me a rack, please? Oh, this is the one from the guy that totally grenaded. But you didn't give me the complete thing. So, anyways, this one here, here's the gears, okay, the hydraulic gears. And then on the pump, this is a twin cam pump. Normally, there's a flat piece inside here. Um, that's missing, you just took this out of the scrap metal. And uh, there's a wave washer, basically a very thin washer that's bent, and it puts pressure on these to keep them all separated um, as they rotate inside here. Um, but here, here's another one uh, with a tensioner. It's up against the, the gear. It's not that bad. Typically, it's, it's worn here. You can see that's worn down inside there. According to the service manual, you would replace that. Um, and this is under extreme pressure. And the reason they fail is because of the abrasiveness of the chain and the amount of pressure. It's way more than necessary because of the spring. Very good design um, initially. Um, I mean, Jim Fueling designed this motor in the mid 90s and uh, it worked great. And uh, you just, it's just an Achilles heel. You know what I mean? I have customers that have changed these early on. They put gear drive and an upgraded pump. They got 150,000 miles on them. I think the other day we had a customer come in, had to put an upgraded pump and gear drive in his. He's got 200,000 miles on it. I really want to take a look at that one. That would be kind of awesome um, just to see the condition of it. Um, but that's the big deal. God, my hands are all greasy and or actually oily now. My OCD is going to kick in here pretty quick. Um, but the thing of it is, is that the orientation of this pump, when it's on the back of the plate, this goes into the motor, there's an O-ring there, and this sits about mm, probably a quarter of an inch off the bottom of the, uh, the, the cam case at the very bottom, and this is what picks up the oil and sucks it back in the engine. And uh, they have, the pump is a pump, and it's also a scavenging gear in there. It sucks the oil out of the, the engine and, and puts it back into the tank. But it's very, very important that you guys get your cam chain tensors inspected. If you happen to have a Harley, like I said, from 1999 to 2006, um, they need to be inspected, especially if you're in the zone. Once you get into 30,000 miles, um, it's rolling the dice. I've seen these things break and under 2,000 or 20,000 miles. I've seen them, like I've opened one up at 38,000, 40,000 miles. You're like, wow. Nobody ever replaced these? No, nope, I'm the original owner and I had this thing since 2000 and it runs like a champ. And you're like, well, you know what? You're doing pretty good. You have one of the rare ones that haven't grenaded yet. You're like a one percenter, not to be confused with the other one percenters. Bottom line is, fix it, don't fix it, don't care. Because when that thing grenades, I'll make more money off you fixing the damn engine because it's totally messed up. Why? Because stuff gets pumped through that engine. It's in the oil pan. And the other thing is, is that's real important you guys don't understand. When that piece breaks, this is an oiler. This is a factory oiler. And if you look at it, if you turn it the right direction, uh, it's a little teeny weeny hole in that thing. I mean, teeny weeny. I mean, it's like a size of a pinhole. Squirts oil in the bottom of the engine and uh, helps suck the, the heat out of the piston stuff. But more specifically, it's for lubrication purposes. If that thing gets plugged up, what do you think is going to happen to your engine? Bye-bye. Grenaded. Done. All because of a simple little thing that you could have checked. I'll see you then. Make sure your bike is up to snuff. Ask for a wellness check at my garage.
Have a good one. See you.